In the previous lessons, we have studied basic policy gradient algorithms of the reinforced family, and then we have studied more advanced concepts that we need to go further. Now we are ready to start studying state-of-the-art reinforcement learning algorithms, and we will start with TRPO and ACTOR. So the idea is that from the algorithms that are the closest to standard policy gradient methods. We will see that there are three aspects that distinguish FIRPO from reinforce-like methods. One is that it uses a surrogate return objective. Another one is that it uses a natural policy gradient approach. And finally, to compute the gradient itself, it uses a conjugate gradient approach. And then we will see the differences with respect to ACTOR where ACTOR approximates a second order gradient descent using the Hessian and uses the chronic perfectored approximated curvature to perform this computation efficiently. So let's start with TRPO. I told you in previous lessons that the standard way to compute the gradient of the global utility function with respect to policy parameters is given by, the, by this formula. Here I am simplifying a little the notations for being more compact. So this gradient is obtained just by differentiating this loss function, but you can note that we can obtain exactly the same gradient from differentiating this other loss function, which will be our surrogate loss function, where p of theta alt is the policy at the previous iteration. And differentiating this is equivalent to differentiating that, because as we have seen when uh, explaining the derivation of the policy gradient. There is a property of the log gradient, which is that it can be rewritten this way. So this is equivalent. So in TRPO, we will use this loss function instead of this one. There is another justification for doing this, which is based on important sampling. In fact, this term can be said an important sampling term. I won't go into that, but if you want to know more about these things, you should have a look at John Schulman's lecture in the Deep Boot Bootcamp series of lectures at that particular time. The second notion that we need to understand TRPO is the notion of trust region. So what does this mean? In fact, if you consider a standard loss function and you consider the gradient of this loss function with respect to some parameter theta, as you can see, the gradient is very accurate at the point where you calculate it, but the more you move away from this point, the less accurate it is. And if you move a little uh, too far away, then the gradient would be completely different. So this will be the same for the global utility function that we are considering, the gradient of the global utility function with respect to parameters is only accurate close to the current policy. So when we update an old policy to into a new policy, we should not move too far away from a trust region so as to avoid the gradient to become too much inaccurate. And th these ideas are explained in the KKD and Longford paper, which is quite useful in that domain. So, to ensure this trust region property, TRPO will come upon a notion which is called the natural policy gradient. One way to constrain two stochastic policies to stay close to each other is to constrain their kullback leibler divergence. And you can see on this graph that the kullback leibler divergence is smaller when the variance is larger. So here you have two stochastic policies represented by two Gaussians, and they are at the same distance. And you can see that if their variance is large, the kullback leibler divergence is small, whereas if their variance is small, then the kullback leibler divergence is large. So if you want to optimize a gradient using a KL constraint, it will be easier to move the mean further away when the variance is large because your KL divergence will keep small. So in practice, when you are performing gradient updates on your policy under a KL divergence constraint, then the mean policy, so this line, will converge first toward the other one and then the variance will be reduced because if you start by reducing the variance, then you cannot move the policy anymore because your KL divergence will increase. So the idea is that you will keep the variance large, so it, you will keep exploring. So this ensures a large enough amount of exploration noise until you converge to a somewhat optimal policy and then the exploration will be reduced. You can find other properties of the natural policy gradient and the way it is implemented with KL divergence in this paper 
TRPO, Trust Region Policy Optimization, is presented in this paper, and this is an implementation of the ideas that we have just seen. So it starts with a th quite theoretical part, where it provides some proof for monotonous improvement towards the optimal policy, but actually this proof is based on assumptions that do not hold in practice, so you can more or less ignore the theoretical part. And to ensure the trust region between uh, a policy and the next, TRPO uses the natural gradient update instead of the standard gradient descent. So in practice, it, it means solving this optimization problem. So you want to maximize the expectation over the policy parameters of this subrogate loss function, but you are subject to this constraint, which is that the expectation of the KL divergence should stay smaller than uh, some threshold. So to perform this optimization, TRPO uses a conjugate gradient method, which is a method which only uses product of vectors to compute the gradient. Okay. Whereas in general, when you want to uh, approximate the natural gradient, you have to compute a Fisher information matrix whose size depends on the num number of parameters of your policy. And if your policy is a neural network, then your number of parameters is huge and the Fisher information matrix can even not be stored into your computer. Besides, to compute the surrogate loss function, you need an estimate of the advantage function. And to get this estimate of the advantage function, you need an empirical estimate of the value of following the current policy. Okay. To do this, TRPO uses a Monte Carlo estimate, so it's not a bootstrap approach, that's a Monte Carlo estimate approach uh, with regression. But as for the policy, it constrains it with this constraint, so you try to minimize the squared error between your model and the data that you get from Monte Carlo trajectories, but you constrain it so that the error will stay behind some threshold. And it is explained in the paper that this is equivalent to applying a mean kullback leiber divergence constraint between the current value function and the previous value function. So the general properties of TRPO are the following. First, it will move away from the current policy, but slowly, due to the trust region constraint. So it's not an algorithm that will very quickly find an optimal policy. It is quite simple inefficient. And when you apply a gradient to some function that you want to optimize, you need to determine a step size. A key idea is in TRPO is that to find this step size, which is quite important in the way your policy will converge to the optimal policy, TRPO uses a method called line search to find the correct step size efficiently. By being on policy and moving slowly from the current policy, TRPO is more stable than methods like DDPG or TD3. It performs quite well in practice, but it is, as I said, much less sample efficient. But its main weakness is that the conjugate gradient approach that it implements is not provided in standard tensor gradient libraries such as PyTorch or TensorFlow. So in practice, it is not much used because that's complicated to code for those conjugate gradient approaches. So PPO, which is the successor of TRPO, had a much greater impact because it's much easier to code. I will present this algorithm in the next video. I must also mention that TRPO is a lot related to natural actor critique and relative entropy policy search methods from Jan Peters that I won't present today. Let us now move to actor. In the previous gradient descent techniques that I have presented to you so far, we were using a first order approximation of the gradient, so a straight line so as to approximate the slope of this function here. And one point is that with this straight line, we don't know where to stop because there is no potential minimum. Actually, second order approximation of the gradient would give these kind of curves, and here you would get a natural minimum. And they provide, in general, a more accurate approximation. The point is that they are much more expensive to compute, because you need to compute the Hessian matrix of your function. And if your Hessian matrix is symmetric positive definite, or SPD, then the gradient will provide a minimum. Anyways, as you can see, even when you use a second order approximation, when you move far away from the point where you calculated the gradient, it starts being inaccurate at some point. So again, the true derivative is only very local and you should use a trust region ID when you use a second order derivative. 
So the trust region constraint should apply to second order methods too. So let us now see the actor algorithm. It is based on another paper which is called KFAC for connector factor approximated curvature, where they provide a method to efficiently estimate a gradient. And the idea consists in using block diagonal estimations of the Hessian matrix to do better than first order methods. So actor can be seen as just TRPO with a connector factored approach to the natural gradient calculation. But actually, in the way to update the critique, it uses the approach which is closer to the one of PPO that we will see next. So it is closer to actor critique updates. And they show in the paper that the update cost of actor is only 10% to 25% higher than standard gradient descent, despite the second order approach. So it improves sample efficiency. But actually, there was not much excitement about this paper. So probably using uh, block diagonal estimations make it that the gradient approximation is not so robust. So it works well in some cases and worse in some other cases. We will now move to PPO. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask.